We're going to talk about solving absolute value equations today. All right, this is a really simple process, I promise. You guys are going to be totally fine with it. Hopefully, you can get most of your web assign done before we leave, then you don't have any homework over the weekend. But I need you to write down a couple steps. So the first thing I want you to write down, this is how we solve. The first thing we're going to do, let me move it over here. We're going to... I'll write it right on here. Isolate, which means what? Separate. Mm -hmm, separate. You want the absolute value all by itself. So you want to abs uh, isolate the absolute value. Just like we did with the radical, you want the absolute value to be all by itself. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to form or write, however you want to say it, two equations. One with a positive answer and one with a negative answer. <clears throat> and then we're going to solve, and you have to solve and check. It is super duper important that you guys solve them and then check. If you don't check, if you don't check, <clears throat> you have a possibility of getting them wrong. So we're gonna go through all of these examples, like, I don't know, 12 or 13 examples, and then I'm gonna let you guys start your web assign. Follow along with me, people at home, ask questions as they come up, and I will help you with anything that you need. But if I look at this first example, okay, it says the absolute value of two x minus five equals three. The reason that we set two different equations is because, guys, look, if I have, <clears throat> excuse me, the absolute value of three is what? What's the absolute value of three? Three. three. What's the absolute value of negative three? three? Three. Does anybody know what absolute value means? Anything inside of it's positive. Yep. Does anybody know what absolute value measures? The distance from zero. The distance from zero. Very good. So if I say positive three, it's one, two, three spaces from zero. If I say negative three, it's one, two, three spaces from zero. Absolute value just measures the distance away from zero. So let's look at this first example again. My absolute value <clears throat> is isolated. So I'm going to say 2x minus 5 equals 3 and 2x minus 5 equals negative 3. Right? We're going to set two equations, one to a positive answer, one to a negative answer. Now let's just solve. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, and I get x equals 4. Then I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 2x equals 2. Divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 1. Okay, we've got two solutions. Let's check. You always go back to the original and check to make sure that they work. So I have the absolute value of 2 times 4 minus 5. Does that equal 3? 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 5, absolute value, is absolute value of 3. Does that equal 3? Yeah. So we're good. That one works. Yes. Same thing over here. We said the absolute value of 2 times 1 minus 5. Does that equal 3? not negative 3, you go back to the very original to check. So I have 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 minus 5, absolute value, does it equal 3? <clears throat> well, the absolute value of 3 is 3, correct? Mm -hmm. So then this solution works. Two solutions. What do you think would happen if you plugged it back in and they didn't work? What would your answer be? Yeah. No solution. That will happen on your web assignment. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. You have to have a positive answer and a negative answer. And that's how most of them are going to be. Mm-hmm. So if you start out, like, say that said 2x, absolute value 2x minus 5 equals negative 3. If that was your original, then your second equation would be 2x minus 5 equals positive 3. You want to have one negative and one positive. All right, so like something like this. This is super simple, guys. <clears throat> Very straightforward. If I have absolute values already by itself, right? 
So I'm going to say 5x equals 20 and 5x equals negative 20. And all we do is solve. Divide both sides by 5, I get x equals 4. Divide both sides by 5, I get x equals negative 4, right? So go back to the original. Absolute value of 5 times 4, does that equal 20? Is the absolute value of 20? 20. Yes. So I have the absolute value of 5 times negative 4. Does that equal 20? Is the absolute value of 20? 20. Yes. yes. Now, somebody last period was like, isn't this just always going to work? No. <clears throat> they will not always work. So you just got, that's why we're going to get in the habit of checking and checking and checking. Whoops. All right, same thing here. Just because we have a negative inside doesn't mean anything. Is my absolute value by itself? Yes. So you have negative 3x equals 10, and my other equation is negative 3x equals what? Negative 10. Divide by negative 3. I get x equals negative 10 thirds. And this one over here, we're going to divide by negative 3. And I get x equals positive 10 thirds, right? Now, I have to check. I have to make sure, sure, sure that those work. So we go back to the original. I have the absolute value of negative 3 times 10 over negative 3. Does that equal 10? What happens with a, pot, a 3 on the top in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator? They cancel out. So I have the absolute value of 10. Does that equal 10? Yeah. We're good to go. Same thing here. I'm going to check. Use the original. <clears throat> absolute value of 3, negative 3 times 10 over 3. Does that equal 10? Well, 3's cancel out, so I have negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10. Does that equal 10? Yes. Yep. So you're good to go. It's imperative, though, that you check. Don't get lazy and just go, oh, I'm sure it'll work. That'll be the time that it doesn't. All right, again, this is just a multi-step equation. Nothing you guys haven't seen before. Isolate your absolute value. So what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Subtract 3. Great. Isolated. Yep. So let's get it all by itself. So I have 5 times the absolute value. Right? Now what? Hold on. Let's divide both sides by 5. Because we remember we want the absolute value totally by itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now my absolute value is isolated. So now I can form my two equations. It's just going to say x equals 5 and x equals negative 5. All right, I got two solutions. I must plug them back in to make sure that they work. So I have 5 times the absolute value of 5 plus 3 equals 28. What's 5 times the absolute value of 5? 25 plus 3 gives me? Does 28 equal 28? All right, we're good to go. <clears throat> Same thing over here. I have 5 times the absolute value of negative 5 plus 3. Does that give me 28? What's 5 times the absolute value of 5? 25 plus 3. Is that 28? It sure is. So both of these solutions work. Now, again, guys, if I were to take my solutions and plug them back in when I checked and they did not work, what would my answer be? No solution. I promise you that will happen on your web assign. I promise you it will happen on a test or a quiz. No, if one of them doesn't work, generally it'll be both or none. But if one works and one doesn't, you're fine. So we just put like the one that works? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, step one, isolate the, ver the absolute value. Is it isolated? Yes or no, is it by itself? It okay, x minus three equals two. x minus three equals negative two. Solve this, guys. Add 3. I get x equals 5. Add 3. I get x equals 1. Got to check. Back to the original. So I have absolute value of 5 minus 3. Does that equal 2? 
What's 5 minus 3? What's the absolute value of 2? We're good to go. Absolute value of 1 minus 3, does that equal 2? So I have the absolute value of negative 2. Does that equal 2? It sure does. So we're good. Everybody okay if I go too fast? Okay, this gets redundant. I know. That's good. Repetition. Is my absolute value isolated? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite. I have two equations. It's 2x minus 3 equals positive 7, and 2x minus 3 equals negative 7. Solve. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals 10. Divide by 2. x equals 5. Exact same thing. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals negative 4. Divide by 2. And x equals negative 2. <clears throat> Before I move on, pat myself on the back and say how smart I am, what do I need to do? Check. I got to check. check. Go back to the original, guys, the absolute original problem. So it's the absolute value of 2 times 5 minus 3. Does that equal 7? So 10 minus 3 is the absolute value of 7, 7. Yep, so x equals 5 is the solution. So now I have the absolute value of 2 times negative 2, right? Minus 3, does that equal 7? Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Is the absolute value of negative 7 the same as positive 7? Yep, it sure is. So this is a solution as well. We okay? Yes? <clears throat> okay? Yes. Is my absolute value isolated? Yes. Yes, it is. So I have 2x minus 3 equals 11. 2x minus 3 equals negative 11. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals 14. Add 3 to both sides over here. 2x equals negative 8. Some of you are going to want to solve them simultaneously. Some of you are going to want to go one at a time. Doesn't matter to me. Whatever works for you. So if I divide by 2 here, I get x equals 7. If I divide by 2 here, I get x equals negative 4. So let's check. Absolute value of 2 times 7 minus 3. Does that equal 11? 14 minus 3 is 11. So is the absolute value of 11 the same as 11? Yes. Yes. 2 times negative 4 minus 3 equals 11. So I have negative 8 minus 3. Negative 11. Is the absolute value of negative 11 the same as positive 11? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. <clears throat> You guys are doing fine. This is not crazy hard. All right, pay attention with negative signs. I want to isolate this absolute value. So what do I do first? Do okay, what do I do first? Not the six. We want to get the absolute value all by itself. We got to get anything that's next to it to go to the opposite side. Okay, let's subtract it because it's already positive. So we'll subtract it from both sides. That's okay. So negative absolute value of 3x plus 6 equals negative 3. Divide by negative 1 to make it positive. So I have the absolute value of 3x plus 6 equals a negative divided by negative is a positive. Now that I have my rat my Excuse me, absolute value all by itself. What's my next step? That's a six. My handwriting's just. Is that better? Sorry. What's my next step, people at home? I have to write my two equations. I have my 3x plus 6 equals positive 3, 
and 3x plus 6 equals my negative 3. And now we can go ahead and solve. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Good. So 3x equals negative 3. Divide by 3. And I get x equals negative 1. Right? Minus 6 from both sides. <clears throat> 3x equals negative 9. Divide by 3. And I get x equals negative 3. So before I move on and say how smart I am, I need to just make sure, I'm going to go back in here and check, to the original, 4 minus absolute value of 3 times negative 1 plus 6, does that give me 1? So I have negative 3 plus 6, so 4 minus the absolute value of 3, is that 1? 4 minus 3, is that 1? Yes. So this is an answer. 4 minus the absolute value of 3 times negative 3 plus 6. Does that give me 1? Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3, right? So 4 minus the absolute value of negative 3. Does that give me 1? Yes, it does, because the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 4 minus 3 equals 1. So this is also a solution. Questions at home? No questions. All right. <clears throat> if I want to isolate this absolute value, there's two things I need to do to get it all by itself. What would that be? Not yet. Let's subtract the 6. Good. What's 15 minus 6? Mm -hmm. So absolute value. Now we're going to divide by 3. So I have the absolute value of x plus 5 equals 3. Once I have that isolated, I can write my two equations. I have x plus 5 equals positive 3, and x plus 5 equals negative 3. All right, and we solve. Minus 5, I get x equals negative 2. Minus 5, I get x equals negative 8. Questions? <clears throat> The question was, wouldn't it have worked if you divided by 3 and then, in this case, if we divided by 3, no, because if we divided by 3, what do you mean, divide, what would you divide everything by? So you'd get, well, in, in this case it works, but it won't normally, that's just a coincidence. You need to... Use opposite of PEMDAS, which would be SADMEP, but you got to undo subtraction addition first, and then our multiplication division. Yeah. All right, guys, so when we go back to check, we have 3, put my negative 2 plus 5 plus 6, does that equal 15? Negative 2 and 5 is 3, so I have 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 15. This one is good to go. When I plug in negative 8, 3, absolute value of negative 8, <clears throat> excuse me, plus 5, plus 6 equals 15. So I have 3 times the absolute value of negative 3 plus 6 equals 15. Again, 9 plus 6 equals 15. We're good. So far, everything that we've done has just worked out nice and pretty, and you guys are thinking, why do I have to check all of these? Here's the reason why you have to check, and I'm sure you'll see more of these as you go through your web assign and as you go through test reviews and stuff, because I guarantee you I'll put something on the test that has a little bit of a curveball, so you guys have to do this. We want to isolate our absolute value. So if I subtract 20 from both sides, I get the absolute value of 2x minus 4 equals negative 5. Correct. <clears throat> All right, Nico just looked at that and said, wait a second, right there I could tell it's no solution because any time you have absolute value, guys, absolute value is always what kind of a number? Positive. Positive. So there is nothing that I could plug into X that would give me a negative 5 as an answer. But it's important that if you don't recognize, if you recognize that Nico right there and you just told me no solution, totally fine. A lot of us won't see that, and that's fine. If you continue to solve this, look, I would write 2x minus 4 equals negative 5. Then I would change the sign, 2x minus 4 equals positive 5. Go through the motions of solving. We're going to add 4 to both sides. 
2x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. And I get x equals negative 1 half. Guys, you're in high school. We're juniors and seniors. You're going to get fractions. You need to be able to work with fractions. Don't just cry. You can do it. Add 4 to both sides. You get 2x equals 9. Divide by 2. And I get x equals 9 over 2. All right? Some of you would get to this point and be like, oh, I got two answers. I'm good. That's why you have to go in and check. On your test, I graded your first part. A lot of you got answers and then did not plug them back in to see if it made the equation true on our radicals. And that gave us some issues. So when I go back to the very original problem, I have 20 plus the absolute value of 2 times negative 1 half minus 4. Does that give me 15? Well, guys, inside, this is easy. My 2's cancel out. So I have negative 1 times negative 4, which is what? I get positive 4. Yeah? You guys with me? So 20 plus 4, does that give me 15? No. So negative 1 half doesn't work. What happens when I use 9 over 2? I have 20 plus the absolute value of 2 times 9 over 2. Do okay, watch this. Equals 15. Well, this will cancel out. What's 9 minus 4? 5. So 20 plus the absolute value of 5. Does that give me 15? No. So this one doesn't work. Some of you will make a mistake somewhere. This isn't 4, guys. This is negative 5. Look. Yeah, I was yeah. confused. I wanted to say something, but... So then say it! I didn't know. I was, like, confused. So who cares if you were wrong? I was. Right? No big deal. <clears throat> if you guys go through this, just some of you would, would forget that there was the absolute value here. Or you would forget that the absolute value is a, negative num is a positive number. So some of you would say 20 minus 5 is 15. You've got to be so super careful. See how I just wasn't super careful? You have to be super careful. This says the absolute value of negative 5. So that means 20 plus 5. Neither one of these answers work. So your answer here would be no solution. You absolutely have one or two of those on your web assign. What if you have one that works and one that doesn't? Then put in the one that works if that happens. All right, super important that you guys follow along with these last two because I don't know if you've whoops, seen something like this before. What do you notice about these two? <clears throat> they both have absolute value, okay? There's a specific way to solve this, so make sure you're paying attention. Both of them are isolated, right? There's nothing on either side that's trying to attack them or anything. So the first equation that you're going to write is just the equation itself without the absolute value. The second equation you have to write, you have to make one negative. Just like we did in uh, all the ones that we did, we had a positive answer and a negative answer, right? So I'm just going to rewrite x minus 1, and then I'm going to make my 3x plus 2 negative. You could make the first one negative and the second one positive. doesn't matter. I would just get in the habit of doing the same thing every time. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to add 1 and subtract 3x. So I have negative 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 2, and I get x equals negative 3 over 2. Now, just because the last one was a fraction and didn't work, do we just assume all fractions don't work? Okay, good. So look, here's what we have to do with this. We have to distribute that negative. So I have x minus 1 equals negative 3x minus 2. Go through your solving process. I'm going to add 3x because I like x's on the left-hand side. I'm going to add 1, and I get 4x equals negative 1. <clears throat> so x equals negative 1 fourth. What do I need to do? i got to plug it back in. So let's look. Guys, watch. Some of you are going to get all messed up doing this. Absolute value of negative 3 over 2 minus 1 
does that equal the absolute value of 3 times negative 3 over 2 plus 2? Okay, I've got to get a common denominator. 1 over 1, if I was going to change that to seconds or to, to 2 as a denominator, what would it become? 1 whole is how many seconds? 2? 2 over 2? All right, the same as 2 over 2. So what's negative 3 minus 2? Negative 5 over 2. All right, now over here, same thing. When I multiply this, I get negative 9. So I have negative 9 over 2. If I'm going to take the whole number 2 and make it into seconds, what does it become? If one whole was 2 over 2, what is 2 wholes? 4 over 2. Good. So negative 9 minus 4 is negative 5 over 2. Is the absolute value of negative 5 over 2 the same as the absolute value of negative 5 over 2? Yeah. Yes, so this works. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with 1 fourth of the absolute value of negative 1 fourth minus 1. Does that equal the absolute value of 3 times negative 1 fourth plus 2? Fourths. If I'm going to make 1 whole into fourths, do you guys agree with me that becomes 4 fourths? Okay, so it's the absolute value of negative 5 fourths equals, this becomes negative 3 over 4. If I'm making 2 into fourths, what does that become? What is it? Is this a, th this is a 1, right? Yeah. If this, look. I'm going to make this into fourths. So if I multiply the bottom by 4, I multiply the top by 4, right? That gives me, so I have negative 3 fourths plus 8 fourths. 4 over 4 would have been just 1. So I have negative 5 fourths. Does that equal the absolute value of positive 5 fourths? Yes? Is negative 5 fourths absolute value <coughs> equal positive five, the positive 5 fourths? Yes. yes. So we're good to go. You guys are going to have gross problems like that. They're not all going to be cake like we just went through 100 miles an hour. Let's look at 12, and then we're done. How do I do 12? Somebody walk me through it. OK, I'm going to write x plus 3. OK, 2x plus 1. Good. And then what is my other? equations look like? Um, it's the same thing, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I'm going to say x plus 3 equals, I'm going to put a minus in front of here and say 2x plus 1. If, okay, here we go. Let's solve this side. Take your time. Minus 2x from both sides, right? Yeah. We get negative x minus 3, and I get what? negative 2, so I can rewrite this as x equals positive 2, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say x plus 3, and then I'm going to distribute that negative, so negative 2x minus 1. I like things, <coughs> excuse me, the left-hand side, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I get 3x, and then I'm going to subtract 3 equals negative 4, agreed? All right, now divide by 3, and x equals negative 4 thirds. Thank you again. Now, before I just say, oh my gosh, I'm so smart, what do I need to do? Check. Check, good. So go back to your very original. I have the absolute value of 2 plus 3. Does that equal the absolute value of 2 times 2 plus 1? So five, absolute value of 5, does that equal the absolute value of 5? OK, good to go. Over here, again, same thing. I'm going to do it up here so you guys can see. Absolute value of negative 4 thirds plus 3, does that equal the absolute value of 2 times negative 4 thirds plus 1? 
If I'm gonna change the whole number three into thirds, right? This is a one underneath here, so I'd have to multiply the bottom by three and then the top by three, correct? What is it? Yep, so negative four over three plus nine over three, good. What is that gonna give me? Yep, the absolute value of five over three, good. Now over here, I'm gonna multiply. So I'm gonna get the absolute value of negative eight thirds plus one. Well, one is the same as what in thirds? Three over three, over three. good. So negative eight plus three gives me the absolute value of negative five over three. Are these two things equivalent? The absolute value of five thirds and the absolute value of negative five thirds? Yes. It, it's, you're not distributing it. It's just, see in the original, it's two times x. Yeah. So x equals negative four thirds is a solution.